made. Once again, we are going to start the first speaker in just about three or four minutes. So if you could continue to come on in and find a seat so that we could get started, we would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Braille Institute San Diego offers free services to visually impaired and blind individuals. Braille Institute offers education, low vision consultations, transportation, and library services. I teach computers and technology like the iPhone and iPad to bright youth and adults, helping them gain their independence. Braille Institute's inspirational youth programs run year-round. Braille Institute, students, staff, and volunteers helping visually impaired people live fulfilling lives. Braille Institute's Braille Institute is a nonprofit organization founded in 1919 by the efforts of one man, John Robert Atkinson. The mission of Braille Institute is to eliminate barriers to living a fulfilling life caused by blindness and severe sight loss. In the spirit of that mission, Braille Institute has grown enormously over the years, now spanning five regions and offering over 220 outreach locations. We are in Los Angeles, Orange County, the desert, Santa Barbara, and of course, San Diego. <laughs> and what kind of services do we offer? Well, we offer and provide free classes and services including low vision consultation, library services, student and family counseling, classes and workshops. We have a youth and teen department and even do technology. And for example, some of our youth department, we engage in martial arts, yeah. art workshops, and even rock climbing. So who are these services for? Well, they're really for anybody. They're for seniors, infants, youth, young adults, anybody in Southern California who is experiencing vision loss and is having difficulty with daily living. They're also for family, friends and caregivers, medical professionals, and community providers. That's right. And again, we welcome you, and thank you for coming to Braille. Thank you, and enjoy your program. <laughs> thank you, Vicki and Tanya. Yay. Let me just quickly let you know about two other tables that are in this room. 
The other is, one of them is for the adult education. So if you are interested in becoming a student here, they can help answer questions for you. There's also a table about the youth services. Once again, if you know somebody that might be interested or been in the front and back lobbies or, or courtyards, in case you have questions, they can point you in the right direction. And very excited to welcome Shoplow Vision. They will be in the location of the old store, which is the room right off the front lobby. So we're very excited that for one day you guys will have a retail outlet where you can go shop for adaptive devices. All right, so on to the main event. I am very, very pleased and honored to introduce Mr. Juan Hernandez, who is our own information technology expert and guru. Juan. <laughs> That's right, big round for Juan, woo! Good morning, everybody. Just give me one second to uh, set this up. Okay. So, as um, you all might have read my bio, but a little bit about me. University 2009. In 2009, they released the third version of the iPhone. It was the first time that the iPhone finally had voiceover and zoom. Voiceover is for those that have very little vision or no vision at all. They can access the screen by touching the screen and different gestures that will help them manipulate the, the handset. And also zoom was for those that could see some and needed a, a little bit of aid magnifying the screen. So, and today, it's come a long ways. It, you know, it was very, the technology was great in 2009, but now 2013, it's become immensely powerful. And I'm gonna show you guys and talk to you guys how I use the iPhone messages. I hope you have a great time. Yes. Okay, I'll tell you about it. And it's just been sent, and Robin. And so I'm actually. I'm using the touch screen. As you see, I can move around through the screen. And so I'm just using that by touch. It's a regular iPhone. And one thing I haven't told you all, I'm also, sorry about that. One thing I haven't told you, I'm also totally blind. So I can't see the screen at all. So I go to my calendar. And I'm able to see what what things I have today. Identify objects that I pick out. So I have a bottle of soda here, and I don't know what it is. Well, I really do, but but I'm gonna take a picture of it. Okay, give it a second. Or two. <laughs> Coke bottle. So I know that's what I want. And sometimes, depending on the lighting, it'll, it's actually di uh, Coke Zero. So it, depending on the lighting, it'll be able to tell me what it is. So that's what I want. And so then I go up to the register. Home. 
and I s use my money reader to identify. I'm not making sure. I'm not giving him a fifty. I'm not giving him a fifty dollar bill for a two dollar soda, right? So I take a picture. You see how fast it I'm able to tell what it is. So that's money reader. So that's two apps that I use quite a bit. Well, for you have a, an appointment at 1.30 to remind me at that time. And then the clock app, you know, I can use that with the alarms as, you know, to wake me up in the morning or also during work. Like I set an alarm, you know, because you know, the Celeste has to go for a walk once in a while too. And so, because she gets really angry, trust me. <laughs> and so if I don't, t you know, if, if I forget, it's, you know, it's a bad situation. <laughs> So with um, with the reminders clock and um, alarms and everything, I can keep track of my day to day, and do everything on time and make sure I get to appointments on time, and take care of all of that all through this iPhone, and you know it's just the basic iPhone. For those of you that can't see, it's just just your regular iPhone. You can buy at Apple. Um, the iPhone consists of just one, two buttons, and a volume control. Everything else is by touch. Patient. One a, another thing, oh hush. <laughs> Double tap to open. So I need to email somebody. I n let's say I need to email my uh, supervisor. So what thing I can do is say, send an email. Darlene, would you like to send this message? Darlene Miller. Which email address for Darlene Miller? Work at dgmiller at bellinstitute.org. Work. What's the subject of your email? Hello. And, you know, it's really amazing what you can do with voice. If you have a question, if you want to know something, like, who's the governor of California? Checking. And with Syria, you have the to. The answer is Jerry Brown. So it'll it'll look things up for you. You can have it look up how many calories are there in a Big Mac. You can you can ask it all kinds of fact type questions, and y you know it's really easy to do. As you saw, how you know I just asked it a question. It's just pu pushing a bu one the only button on the iPhone. It allows you to have access to so much via vo by voice. So in um you know finishing everything up with the iPhone, you know it, it creates doors it opens doors for everybody we're all able to do things keep track of our lives manage you know getting from one point to another without getting lost with GPS we can surf the e surf the internet check you know check your email do text messages 10 years ago with the phone I couldn't do text messages you just had your flip phone and you would just dial your number right so you now you can do all that and many more things like the you know scanning objects money you can get, um, you can have it tell you if you have a like a box of mashed potatoes or whatever. It'll tell you the instructions to make it. All of that because it's connected to the internet and it's an incredibly accessible device. And you know that's that's what we do here at Braille. We help people figure out these devices, help them, you know. Email has an attachment. Will it open it also? Unfortunately, right now it won't. Not yet. The okay. the part that it reads the email that's actually brand new as of like a week and a half ago. Uh huh. So I'm thinking maybe someday it'll be able to do that as well. Thank you. Any more questions? Can can you read any documents? Well, not you can't you you know yes you can read documents but you can't tell c you can't have use the voice to read the documents you have to be able to go to the document with your you know using your finger commands and accessing the document and it'll read it out loud to you or if you have some site you can have it magnified to you what about if the document is on paper it is on paper oh that's a really good question um, yes you can it will with the iPhone there are apps that can you know read your mail to you you can take a picture of the envelope and tell you who it's from and you could read as the the letter us when you have are able to do all of this you have had to set it up first you have to give 
the telephone numbers of the people that you usually call. And who does, <laughs> how can you set it up so it can do all of these things? Good question. Well, you know, all those facilities to set it up, to enter your phone numbers, you have a contacts app that, uh, you know, it's, a, it's your address book. And so there's, um, because it's a touch screen, it has no physical keyboard for buttons and stuff. You can, there is a virtual keyboard that you would learn how to use. Or you can plug in a real keyboard to the iPhone, an external keyboard with physical buttons that would let you type in your entries. That's one way. You can also share, if you have a, an address book with a, like an email service, like Gmail or Yahoo, you can share the contacts and have it downloaded straight to your phone. To so you need to do all of that prior to all of being able to do all of these things. Uh, well, only, you know, the, the, the things like sending somebody an email, a message, calling somebody, or, you know, those kind of things, those have to be entered. But if you're not going to do that or, you know, do if you only have a few contacts that you need, you know, all the other apps like getting the, the you know, taking the picture of the soda bottle that I did, or scanning money, those are just a, a close buy would be UTC. Yes. And go to the Apple Store there. Yes. And obtain the device. Yes. And then talk to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Set up an appointment. And then you'll be like me. You have too many voices in your head. <laughs> right. Oh, and you, the one-on-ones are by appointment, um, and so when you're when you make them, they're seven days in advance. But you know. We we usually are able to Some fit it. Usually able to fit everybody in. Would it be possible to obtain an iPhone yeah. from or through DOR? Very good question. For those of you that are using Department of Rehabilitation, the answer is no. Uh, rehab will not buy you an iPhone but they potentially will buy you an iPad if you give them enough justification. You spoke today about the iPhone, but what uh, are there, is the iPad different? Does no. it have special features? So is, it, is buying one or the other preferred? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I did the demonstrations on the iPhone because uh, it's it's small and it's 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 easier to do demos with sometimes because <coughs> I can just pick it up. But everything I showed you guys, except making phone calls like through a to a number like I did, you can do on the iPad, and they work. They're ninety nine point nine 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 percent identical. Josh, you mentioned about several apps. Juan, you mentioned about the money reader. Yes. What's the one for the store? And also, you said the voice is new. The voice app is new. So how can I do that one? Um, well, it depends on your phone. It's uh, i5. If you have that, to get all the new features that I was showing you guys today, it you it's an update. Um, you'd have to go through the update process. Is the iOS ISO 7? Yes. Mm -hmm. Th that will update it to the voice? Yep, that will give you all the new voices and all the new options. And what's the other app? Re what's the other app for the uh, to go to the grocery store? Oh, it's called Tap Tap C. T A P. T A P T A P. And I think it's S E E. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If you technology is level two, the introduction class assumes you have absolutely no technical knowledge <coughs> at all. I have students in their 90s that have never touched computers in their entire life that have bought iPads and are using them successfully. Oh my right. Juan, Juan? Yes. I have a quick question for you. Regarding, you were talking about uh, going to the grocery store and money recognizer. Yes. Um, are you familiar with an application called looktel.com? It's a very, very new product written by a blind woman. And they do similar, but you should check it out. And it has the recognizer for money and also going to the grocery store right down to the SKU, the unit, 
the exact thing you're buying. But the other thing beyond the GPS is when you go like around this campus, it's deeper down with the GPS. It's like a breadcrumbing software to tell you take a left at this bench, a right at that sign, things that right. wouldn't come up in a map. Yes. Um, actually, the app, the money reader app that I was using is by Looktel. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. Just wanted to go. Thank you for the information, though. Thank you. And uh, I just uh, wanted to add a tiny uh, thing. There is uh, multiple applications uh, for visually impaired who can see a little bit called uh, magnifiers that uh, really work as uh, those extensive handheld video magnifiers. So you can use it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes, you can... Um, not to say that, y well, let's let's go back a little bit. You can use the iPhone as a magnifier, but you know it, it's not meant. You know it's not like full purpose magnifier. You're in the home, and I've got a booth in the library, and some of the devices that we're offering for free. This is a two-year pilot project. We're in the middle of our second year, so please, we've given plenty of iPads. Braille Institute in the Palm Desert area, they've got a whole group of 90-something iPad users who got free devices through this project. So come and see me if you have hear vision loss and hearing loss. Thank you, Kathy. Um, that's actually a really good point really quick. Um, for those that are, do have vision loss, the deafblind community, an iPhone can be attached to a device called a refreshable, refreshable Braille device, Braille display. It allows you to see the to feel the screen, basically, to see the writing on the screen in Braille through your fingers. As, as question, please. As much problems that we have with uh, taking an iPad or uh, iPhone with the internet, how do you pick up a signal if you're not connected? Good question. Well, with an iPhone, you should be connected all the time. Um, one of the requirements for an iPhone is to have a data plan um, with all the companies. Uh, that's just one that Apple insisted on that. Y you know, you're, you're kind of forced into a data plan. Um, but with the iPads, it depends because there are types. There is just the Wi-Fi model that connect to wireless internet, like at Starbucks or cafes or, or, or here at Braille Institute, we have a guest Wi-Fi. Or you can get what they call a cellular version that has basically everything that the iPhone has on the in the iPad, but it doesn't do the voice part. It just lets you go on the internet no matter where you are. Did that answer your question? Well, I'd have to have the audio portion. The audio portion? Yeah. Well, that would you know, your if you wanted that, that would be an iPhone. Juan. Yes. Oh, okay, this is Alan. I was calling in reference to, I mean, talking to you, in reference to when, like, my daughter, I text her, how would the thing would correct the, um, you know, she said she get a lot of uh, mistakes on the uh, text. I, well, <laughs> that, that's a really good question. Um, and, you know, I, I can show you how to do that, you know, that would take quite a while, though. So, you know, we could do a one-on-one. -on -one. If you on. Sorry about that. If you, if you schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be glad yeah. to show you. It is possible. Yeah, Gwen, uh, for other apps like iHeart, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, is it possible to navigate um, with the iPhone through the possible stations that you might pick? <coughs> and also, just to mention for the gentleman that was slightly in front of me in front of uh, if you go into the... Uh, your stores, whether it's AT&T or T-Mobile, uh, you might be able to get the phone cheaper than going through some of the other mainstream stores. Um, to your question, yes. Uh, iHeart, like iHeart Radio is fully accessible. You can navigate to the stations. There's a lot of music apps. Pandora, um, brand new as of a couple weeks ago, Apple has, has released a competitor to all the music station apps. It's called iTunes Radio and they're incredibly accessible. Any other questions? Uh, yep, yes you can. All right, 
Sorry, we're kind of running out of time Hi. for questions. Um, don't worry, don't worry. We, after Dr. Bill speaks, Juan will be in the computer lab. He will be available there to answer all of the questions that we didn't get to now, okay? So please go visit Juan. The computer lab is out the back doors of this room to the right, and it's the door after the restrooms on your right, okay? So thank you very much, Juan. Woo! You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have our first drawing for the first set of door prizes. And you have to be present to win. Okay? All right. So let me introduce Brittany Rankin. She is the other low vision specialist on staff. And she is going to walk us through the wonderful and exciting prizes that we're going to be honored to give away to you guys today. Yay! Thanks again to all our vendors for all these wonderful prizes. Good morning, everyone. Everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning. I hope you all enjoyed Juan's talk about how he uses his iPhone and iPad. Thank you, Juan, for such an inspirational and informative speech. You are such a wonderful addition to our staff. And you help me with my iPhone and iPad every day. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, am, I have my iPhone and iPad, but I'm not exactly what you would call super talented. So we do have some wonderful, wonderful uh, prizes that are very generous supporting partners and vendors have donated for all of you. And um, as Sharon mentioned, it is you must be present to win one prize per winner, please. So get your tickets out. The f um, I would like to um, ask Stefan Tervalbeck and Kyle Knirum from Optelec to please come up and join me. They have been, yes, please, a round of applause for both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, these gentlemen and their company have been incredibly generous and have given us, very supportive, they have given us both a cash donation of $500 to support this event as well as today they came, thank you, thank you, as well as a wonderful dr prize of a portable OT lamp. And as we all know that lighting is a very key element in being able to see well. So please, Stefan and Kyle, we would like to acknowledge your wonderful and generous support of Braille Institute, our clients, and patrons here in the San Diego community. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, and I would like to thank Tanya Gonzalez of our youth department for brailing the certificate. Thank you, Tanya. So. The Otlamp HD, it's a portable. And if one of you gentlemen would like to dig into the bag, <laughs> don't fight over it. <laughs> uh, they don't want to listen to my actual <laughs> <laughs> Jonas style. Okay, Kyle, you want to uh, read the number? Sure. 36648. Everybody looking? Three. To me? To see all your effort and, and your continued success. and. We continue to support you with your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Russell Kirkpatrick, and if Tim Billings is on site, if I could get him to step forward from Embassy Suites, San Diego, La Jolla, right next door. The beautiful hotel next door. Come on over, Russell. OK. Embassy Suites has been incredibly generous over the years 
And for this event, they have um, donated the parking. If any of you have parked over in their parking lot, they donated the parking. The treats that you were eating, they generously donated all of that catering. And for a very lucky winner, we have a two-night stay over at their hotel. And uh, so Russell, <laughs> Russell gets to dig into that bag and let our lucky winner change many of your lives over the years. He is a low vision consultant with Clear Vision. He represents HIMSS and has been a wonderful vendor of ours for many years. And um, re in uh, representing HIMSS, we would like to thank all you have done for our community, our um, students, and our clients. So we'd like to present you with this plaque. And again, thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And Hims has generously, very generously donated a lifestyle candy grip. It's a five has a five inch screen. A Smart View Versa. Pardon me while I disappear. <laughs> Smart View Versa. It also is a portable electronic portable video magnifier. So Greg, would you like to do the honors? <laughs> You're Santa Claus today. Isn't that the best? Okay, the lucky winner is 366-384. 366, 384. 366 384. Must be in the front row because that's pretty much what we've gotten so <laughs> far, right? 366-384. Last three numbers are 384. Go fish. <laughs> Three, eight, four. Any winner out there? Okay. Let's let's draw another number then. All right. Okay. I have to work on my drawing skills. <laughs> Three, six, six, two, seven, five. Three, six, six, two, seven, five. There we go. We've been looking for you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. And again, we're going to extend it even more gratitude towards Greg because Greg also rep represents Ahmed. All right, well, thank you very much, Brittany. Oh, it's a pleasure you. working here at Braille. And uh, please come see all of us vendors over here in the classrooms after the uh, next, next uh, speaker. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Greg. Thank you, Stefan and Kyle and Russell and Tim, if you can hear me over at Embassy Suites. <laughs> And um, and Alan and we're gonna t I'm gonna turn it back over to Sharon so we can continue. Hi, we're just gonna take a brief 10-minute break. Go help yourself to refreshments, restrooms, whatever. We're just gonna come back here in about 10 minutes. You'll hear the announcements because we do have speakers out in the courtyard. Thank you, everybody.
right, everybody, we are ready to get started. Your attention, please. Thank you, thank you. With our, we, we were temporarily having some technical difficulties, but welcome to the 2013, right? What we're going to start with is we'll have our executive director of the San Diego Center, uh, Mr. Richard Ybarra, is going to give the introduction to our key uh, place that I call the most beautiful nonprofit facility in San Diego County. <laughs> and before going further, I don't want to miss thanking our generous donors who make everything we do possible and all the free services that are offered here possible. Thank you to all of our donors, whether they're here or they're going to see this on the TV. I also want to thank our marketing and media team in Los Angeles for streaming this live today. And it's going to be on YouTube so people can enjoy the fruits of the uh, presentations by our keynote speaker as well as Juan Hernandez. Thank you very much, Los Angeles. And th let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I'd like to recognize all of our vendors who are here. Just ask them if some of them are in the room still, but recognize and thank all of our vendors who have been so supportive and brought their wares here to show today. Just show of hands and applause for them as well, please. <laughs> and especially I'd like to thank both uh, Optelec and Embassy Suites for their gracious contributions today. Thank you to both of them. And then finally, I want to share my thanks, my personal thanks to so many of you who in my 13 months here have taught me a lot of things, but nothing more than what I'm about to say, and that is that I've, been, I've learned here that you can lose your eyesight, but you can never lose your vision. It's a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor to introduce someone who's become not only well-known, but renowned across the country and certainly within the Braille ranks. Someone who got his undergraduate degree from UCLA, got his doctorate from Southern California College of Optometry, has been and is a fellow at the American Academy of Optometrists and the College of or optometry, American Academy of Optometry and the College of Optometrists, 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 thank you. In 1987, he began his illustrious career working with children and adults with severe sight loss. He's also currently the chief of optometry at the Center for Partially Sighted. And he's the consulting director of low vision for Braille Institute of America. It's my honor and pleasure to present someone who's going to tell us why he has so much hope for the future. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill. And before he takes the microphone, I'd like to give him Braille Institute San Diego Certificate of Appreciation. Recognition to Dr. Bill, keynote speaker, 2013 Braille Institute San Diego annual eye disease seminar, and our great staff, our great team here, a super team of staff that we have at Braille, has even Brailled uh, the certificate that he has here. So Dr. Bill, on behalf of all of our staff and everyone here, <laughs> Braille and Sue Santa, just want to thank, thank you. you and welcome you. you. Take it away, Dr. Bill. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very, very much for inviting me to be here today. This is uh, really a very, very special treat to be asked to be the keynote speaker here today, and I want to thank uh, Richard and Sharon and Brittany and everybody here at Braille Institute for putting on such a wonderful program. 
I also really want to thank uh, all of the sponsors here. This is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, the folks at the Embassy Suites, uh, my wife and I, we stayed there last night and this morning. We went down for the free continental breakfast. But let me tell you something, it was not a continental breakfast. It was omelets to order, pancakes, hash browns, bacon, sausage, cereals, fruit. It was so good. And my wife said, you know what, honey? You better, you better hurry up and get ready because you got to go speak pretty soon. I thought I was on vacation. <laughs> and I also uh, want to thank uh, Juan Hernandez. I thought that was just a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Let's give him another round of applause. I think that from now on, when I speak of Juan Hernandez, I'll never think of him as Juan Hernandez. He's always going to be Big Papa in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but before I start, I know that uh, the audiovisual team here, they're trying to get the projector working. But one of the things here is I'd like to just share something. This is really a day that I, I'm so happy because... Um, this morning, my mentor, the man who got me involved and interested, made me become an optometrist, Dr. Byron Newman is here. And I'd like for all of you to acknowledge Byron. And Byron, if you'd stand up, please. <laughs> Dr. Newman is by far the best optometrist I have ever met in my life, and I owe uh, every bit of success that I have to him. And uh, I, I'm going to tell you a little joke. Usually I don't tell jokes because my kids always say, Dad, don't tell jokes at your lectures because you're the worst at telling jokes. <laughs> but Byron told me a joke this morning, and I'm going to do my best to tell this joke. <laughs> but he talks about how there were these three men, and these three men, every morning they would go and they would walk their dogs around the neighborhood, and one of the guys, he says to the other guys, he says, hey, why don't we stop in the bar here and get a drink? And the other guy said, they'll never let us inside the bar. We got the dogs. We can't go inside the bar with our dogs. And the one guy says, I have a great idea, though. I'm just going to tell them that these are our guide dogs. If these are our guide dogs, they'll let us in. So the first guy walks in there, and he has his dog. And the guy says, no dogs allowed. And he says, I'm blind. This is my guide dog. And he goes, oh, okay, let me help you to find a table. And he goes and sit down. So the other guy sees that he got in, and he goes in there, and he does the same thing. He says, you know, I'm looking for my friend. He's blind here, and he has a guide dog. Can you tell me where he's at? And he goes, oh, yes, is this your guide dog? And he says, sure, they're sitting over here. So the second guy goes in. And then finally, the last guy, he goes in there, and he says, you know, I'm here with my guide dog, and I'm looking for my other friends. And the bartender says, a chihuahua as a guide dog? <laughs> and, and that's not even the punchline yet. <laughs> and, and the guy says, is that what they gave me, a chihuahua? So I want to thank you, Dr. Newman, for, for the, the great joke. So today I'm going to talk to you very, very briefly about some of the changes in the medical treatments to help people with different types of low vision. For many of you may have noticed that I do use, and although I was an optometrist for 18 years, in 2009 I became totally blind, and today I continue to be totally blind. But what I have learned, and I hope that all of you will learn after today, is that blindness, it is not bad. It really isn't. It's just different. I thought that becoming blind was going to be the worst thing. And in my anticipation, my anxiety of not knowing what it was going to be like, I would think of all the things that I would miss in my life. I'm not going to be able to see what my daughter looks like. When I walk her down the aisle, she gets married. 
I'm not going to be able to see what my son's wife looks like. I'm not going to see my grandchildren. And as I kept thinking of all these things that I will not be able to do, I became depressed and angry, and I became exactly the type of person I never wanted to become. But through the things that I've learned from other people who are visually impaired and other people who are blind and also programs such as this at the Braille Institute, I have learned that I could do whatever I want. I could do these things. I could still attend my daughter's wedding. I could go to a party. I could go to the Laker games. I could go to that buffet at the Embassy Suites and enjoy that omelet just as much as anybody else. <laughs> so now is the best time in the history of man to be visually impaired. It honestly is because the ophthalmologists who are surgeons are able to perform treatments that were not available in the past. The low vision optometrist can prescribe special glasses to even help the person who is legally blind to see and to perform the things that they need to do on a daily basis. All the vendors here, you're going to see such amazing technology. I cannot believe the amazing technology with these video magnifiers that could scan the page and read to you. And even with these prizes, I cannot believe the prizes that are being given away here today. The portable video magnifiers, these are just absolutely amazing. So the first thing that we're going to start is we're going to go over a few slides. And the first slide really is just to demonstrate and to illustrate how is it that human beings, how do we see? We often think that the eyes are really like a camera, but the eyes are much, much more complex. The eyes are the receivers of light. Light comes into the eyes and it goes into your pupil, the black circular opening right in the center of your eye. And immediately behind the pupil is a lens and that lens will focus the light rays onto the retina. And the back of the brain processes that information. Two thirds of the entire brain is involved in the process of vision. So we could see that the brain has an abundance of fibers and connective tissues that are related to vision. And this is why vision is such a dominant sense. But even a person who is totally blind, many of you here may be totally blind such as I am, but we also have vision even though we cannot see. And what do I mean by that? We could visualize things in our mind's eye. As I was walking through the Braille Institute today, in my mind, I'm creating a picture. As I'm standing here speaking to all of you, I don't see the room as black. It is the strangest thing. I thought that blindness would mean everything would be black. I see hundreds of people in here today. I cannot see the details of your face. I don't know if what I'm seeing is accurate. But because my brain knows that I'm lecturing in a conference hall, my brain sees these people. And as I close my eyes shut like this, now the world has become black. So it is very, very interesting to under cells, and that macula allows us to see details very, very sharply. Now, when there is damage to the macula, we lose our ability to see details. So people who have wet macular degeneration, the macular cells become damaged because blood vessels from underneath the retina leak and they pass through and they then damage those macular cells. So when a person has wet macular degeneration, these are the people who state that they cannot identify a person's face, they can't read numbers, they can't drive, they can't see television, and many of them will even comment that they have a blind spot in the very center of their head. So one of the things that we have been able to do is to s understand that if we could stop the bleeding, so that the blood doesn't seep through into the macula, we could preserve vision. And that makes a lot of sense. 
it's just like in the same thing if in your home you had a movie screen on the wall and a pipe inside the wall started to leak you would want to stop that pipe from leaking the water to damage that screen well in the past they would use what is called a laser and the laser is like a welding torch and they would just use the laser and they would stop the leakage of blood but what the laser did is that it would burn the macula types of medications are called anti-VEGF and what it means is that they are stopping the formation of these blood vessels now with the ILEA which is the latest particular type of a treatment it's a VEGF trap this is something that makes it so that a person may only need to have an injection once every two to three months so this is a remarkable advancement in the treatment for wet macular degeneration. The other advancement is surgical in the sense that they are now also able to inject the medications directly at the location of where the blood vessels are leaking. They can actually go through the whites of your eye rather than going just straight into the middle of your eye so they could put the medication where it needs to be in a higher concentration and this also has a very very promising effect so this particular type of anti-VEGF medications are helping people with wet macular degeneration people who have diabetic retinopathy where the blood vessels in the eye are leaking and by treating diabetic retinopathy and wet macular degeneration what is happening into your eye and a person receives that level of magnification now this is only available to those folks who are 75 years or older who have a cataract and who have stable macular degeneration now what we have found is that the people who have received this particular type of treatment this has been something that has been extremely extremely helpful to them because they are able to see things in a magnified view out of that eye. Now the first thing that you might think is that would be very strange that if in one eye I see things magnified and in my other eye I don't see things magnified. But the visual cortex of the brain is very, very flexible. And within a matter of weeks, the brain is able to know to use the eye with a telescope to see details and to use the eye without the telescope to give you the peripheral vision to walk. We have seen this for years as optometrists where we would fit people with telescopic glasses. Now we could do this with telescopic glasses just as easily, but a lot of people don't like the way that glasses with a telescope looks. Next slide. In this next slide, you can see that when you look straight on at a person who has the implantable miniature telescope, their eye doesn't look different. You don't see some what types of ingredients to make. When a person has a problem with the DNA, that cell will make a wrong protein and it could result in the eye being developed abnormally. So for example, a child who has an abnormal gene may be born with a retina where the retina is not normal. Now one of the things that's very, very important is that gene therapy is something that is very, very successful when we identify which gene is abnormal. Next slide. One of the things that we have been able to find is that there is a condition that is called Leber's congenital amaurosis. And with Leber's congenital amaurosis, the cells of the retina are not normal, very similar to retinitis pigmentosa. We uh, know that retinitis pigmentosa, Leber's congenital amaurosis, some forms of macular degeneration, and many other eye conditions are related to abnormal genes. So what the scientists have been able to do is to take samples of your blood or they've taken tissue from the inner side and identify whether or not your particular eye condition is related to a specific gene problem. 
with numerous gene problems, they are doing more and more clinical trials where they are doing this on animals first and humans second. And this is a way that we hope that many, many people in the very near future, we could identify the genetic problem and we could then treat it. Another treatment that is also very, very exciting is for people who have retinitis pigmentosa. The Argus 60 is a really very, very space age technological device. And this is where they are using electronic computerized components to bypass the damaged areas of the retina. Now in retinitis pigmentosa, the layer of the retina that is damaged is called the retina rods and cones cellular layer. So what they have done is that they have used a pair of glasses that has a specialized camera on there and the person would wear a very small device which is actually a small computer but it looks about the size of a pager. They implant the electrical array of 60 electrodes underneath the retina and when the camera looks and has a picture it sends a signal to the computer, the computer sends a signal to the electrodes, and the electrodes then send electrical signals down through the optic nerve and to the brain. The most amazing thing about this is that this device has literally reversed total blindness is stem cells. Stem cells is something that is very, very exciting. I know that many of you might have heard things on the television where you can have a stem cell and this stem cell, it can be converted into a heart cell, or it could be converted into a liver, or it can be converted into a retina cell, or the optic nerve. And the truth to all of this is that there is so much research being done with stem cells at this time. At Children's Hospital Los Angeles, the researchers there have been able to use cells and they have been able to produce all 10 layers of the retina. In Japan, they have been able to take a stem cell and they have produced an entire liver. All of this type of advancement in the field of cellular technology is very, very exciting. And what I believe is going to be the case is that it will soon be that the stem cell will then be positioned into the area of the retina that has the damaged cells and they will be able to activate those stem cells so it will produce the desired cell. The problem is is that there are also risks because we would hate to implant stem cells in the eye and it becomes a cancerous tumor or it becomes a foot. You don't want your foot growing in your eye. There is no need for you to go to a different country and receive injections of stem cells. What many people aren't aware of is that there are stem cells in each and every one of your retinas. The situation is we have not yet discovered how can we activate those stem cells with that level of certainty to develop that particular type of cell that we want. Even with people who have glaucoma or other damage to the optic nerve, it is possible that these stem cells can be activated and it will activate the formation of these new fibers in the optic nerve. In a salamander, if you cut the optic nerve of a salamander and you take that chunk out and you throw it away, the salamander will grow those fibers in the optic nerve. The researchers today are just trying to figure out how can we activate those stem cells to become those desired cells. So what I presented today are the medical advances that are available now that are being used on actual human beings. There are many, many other incredible research studies that are being done. And many of these studies are being performed on animals, you could find out more by going to the Foundation Fighting Blindness, an organization that supports a lot of the research. And you could also look for some of the different 
clinical trials at clinicaltrials.gov. But the best thing to find more information about research that's specific to your eye condition would be to speak to your ophthalmologist or your optometrist who is treating you. But in addition to that, I want to just say a couple of things that are just very, very important. We all are here to learn about these medical advances and the very high-tech sophistication of treatments. But the things that you have to remember is that there are many things that are available to you right now. When you go to the see the vendors this afternoon, you're going to find things that will change your life. I know that as I was losing vision, I didn't want to spend $3,000 on a video magnifier to see things, but it was the best investment that I ever did. Just before when I realized my vision wasn't getting any better, one day I took every photo album we had, I took every picture, I put it underneath that video magnifier and I just stared at every one of these pictures trying to burn it into my head. And I am so grateful that I did that because these pictures of, of my children and my friends and family are there. I felt that that was a lot of money at the time, but it was really nothing because I would spend $100,000 to be able to see these types of pictures. They had that type of value. I also want you to remember to stop smoking. If you smoke, smoking is the leading predictor of vision and impairment. The second thing is to protect your eyes. We know that the harmful rays from the sun will damage your eyes. That is a known fact. If you have macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, or you just have blonde hair and blue eyes, you need to protect your eyes because we know that you are at greater risk. You can make an appointment with Sharon or Brittany. They could show you affordable glasses that will protect your eyes. And best of all, the consultation that Brittany and Sharon can do for you here at Braille Institute, just like all other services here at Braille, it's amazing how you guys do it, but they're all for free. So I thank you all very, very much for your time. And I'm going to ask Sharon if we could take a couple of questions or how she wants to proceed so that we can stay on schedule. But uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Dr. Bill. And yes, we have a few moments. We can take some questions and answers. Um, so let's have somebody that didn't get to ask a question the first time. You know, and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of announcements while you guys are thinking of good questions to ask. <laughs> um, I also want to make aware of just some other resources. There is a nonprofit organization called Airs LA. And they're at www.airsla.org. Airsla.org. And these people produce audio recordings for free for people with low vision. And if you're interested in hearing tutorials on how to use the iPod, or you're wondering, should I buy an Android or should I buy the iPhone, uh, there are tens of thousands of free audio recordings available on Airs LA. Also on Airs LA, they also record the research lectures that are presented by the scientists themselves. So if you want to, if you would like to hear those research lectures, you can go to Airs LA, and that again is A-I-R-S, L A as in Airs Los Angeles, airsla.org. So the use of their hands and their tactile skills helps them to picture things in their mind, just as the same way that you will notice there are going to be some people who are partially sighted and some people who are totally blind who can learn the orientation of Braille Institute very quickly and others just cannot seem to learn it. The difference between that 
is the visual perceptual regions of the brain are very different in those two people. Another is there, question? Is there any research being done with macular dystrophy? Would you repeat the question about macular, macular dystrophy? Is there any research being done? It just seems like it's not on the internet that much. And yeah, the question is, is there research being performed on macular dystrophy? And macular dystrophy is a big, big generalized term. So for example, macular degeneration is a form of macular dystrophy. Cone degeneration could be categorized as macular dystrophy. So one of the things, if you do have a diagnosis of macular dystrophy, I would like for you to see a vitreal retinal specialist who can then identify specifically what is your particular type of macular dystrophy. It might be something that is called cone degeneration. It might be macular degeneration. It may be Stargardt's disease, Best disease, vitiliform, maculopathy. There's many, many specific conditions. And once you receive the more specific diagnosis, then you could search for the different types of clinical trials for that specific disease. Next question. Uh, my question is, I know the proper sunglasses are good. There's all kinds of sunglasses. And yes, yeah, smoking is bad for every cell in your body. But how about diet and the blueberry? Is that just a myth? Yeah, the question is, what about vitamin therapy? And that was actually one of the slides that I apologize, I skipped. I know we had a slide in there that did talk about vitamin therapy. There is a lot of evidence that does show that nutrition is important to the health of the retina. So blueberries are very helpful. Okay, the AREDS2 study has just shown that they substituted lutein and zeaxanthine with beta carotene. Now, the reason that they did this is that beta carotene in smokers can cause lung cancer. So they removed the beta carotene because they didn't want smokers to mistakenly take beta carotene, and they substituted it with the lutein, the zeaxanthine, and the omega 3s. And they found that that vitamin cocktail was also effective in helping people with moderate to severe macular degeneration. So blueberries are very good. Fish that have a lot of oil in it is very, very good. Dark green leafy vegetables are very, very good. And uh, if you guys do get a chance, uh, maybe Dr. Byron Newman, you could stand up. You guys should look for this man because this man knows everything about nutrition. He is an uh, expert in that. So the vitamins are very helpful. As far as the sunglasses, it's very important that you want these glasses to filter out the ultraviolet. And number two, you want the glasses to filter out the blue wavelengths of light. The blue wavelengths of light are the wavelengths, the color, that is most damaging to the tissues of the retina. So uh, here at Braille Institute, we have glasses that are called cocoons that could really protect your eyes if you're out in the sun. One last question? Yes, sir. Uh, your lecture was very informative and we do really appreciate it. My question concerns dry macular degeneration and I didn't hear too much about uh, what's going on in the, that research or any therapy. Is there anything in addition that uh, I might have missed? Yeah, the question is about dry macular degeneration. Is there any treatment that is known to really help people with dry macular degeneration? And the answer to that is yes. The vitamin therapy, the AREDS study, AREDS2 study, has shown that the vitamin therapy will help the person who does have dry macular degeneration. Number two, People who do have the dry macular degeneration are receiving that implantable miniature telescope that we showed slides on. And then number three, that there is a lot of other types of research where they're hoping to be able to use the stem cells to replace the areas of the retina, of the macula, where those cells are no longer functioning. So there is a lot of research for the dry macular degeneration 
Uh, and the reason for that is because dry macular degeneration is the most common vision problem among older adults, people over the age of 60 who have vision impairment. So there's a very, very large market. Okay, thank you everybody for your attention. I know there's still questions. Thank you, Dr. Bill. We're, we're going to ask Dr. Bill to maybe stay here for another 10, 15 minutes. If you have further questions, uh, you could come up and talk to Dr. Bill and ask your questions, okay? So thank you, Dr. Bill. Awesome presentation. Thank you, thank you. Big round of applause for Dr. Bill. Woo! Stay, stay tuned because we're in just a few minutes. We're going to give away. All right, everybody. We are now going to get ready for the second and last round of giveaways. Once again, thank you to our generous vendors who have donated another set of really wonderful gifts. Round of applause, please, for our wonderful vendors. Thank you. Yay! Woo! All right, so I will give the microphone back to Brittany, and she will start the next round of giveaways. Thank you, Sharon. Afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed Dr. Bill's speech. Thank you again, Dr. Bill. Another round of applause for Dr. Bill. Thank you. Again, he is a huge inspiration, a wonderful source of knowledge, and has been a very wonderful teacher for both Sharon and I and the entire low vision department at Braille Institute. We have been so fortunate to learn from him. And I hope everybody that has come in to see Sharon and I has been fortunate enough and feels that they have learned from Sharon and I and the knowledge that we have gained from Dr. Bill. So on with the prizes. Um, we have had, today has been a day of generosity. Um, we would like to thank the woman who won the Ahmed Aki. She felt that um, she, thank you, she felt that somebody else would deserve it more. So thank you, hands, hats off to you. So if I can get Greg Peterson back up here, is he in here, Greg? Okay, well Sharon's gonna do this. Um, if we could get another draw. Oh, Greg, to the rescue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this is for the Aki, the Ahmed Aki. Can we do this next week too? <laughs> the number is 366 354. 366 354. Sorry, David Overly, you work here. You don't call. So Did okay, somebody raise there. their hand? All the way in the back. 354? Okay. I could bring. All right, I'll go to her. <laughs> Thank you. Greg's going to bring it, the certificate on back to you. And once we have that in our hands, we will get it right to you. We promise. So congratulations. Can I get Mike and Elaine Jew up here, please? Mike and Elaine are from Berryessa Designs. For anybody who has been in to see Sharon and I, you have experience the wonderful lights that we have demonstrated that Mike and Elaine um, have for us. As you all know, lighting is a critical element in being able to see well and see properly. And so we would like to acknowledge Berryessa Designs and everything that you have done for Braille Institute and the San Diego community. So thank you, thank you Tanya again for brailing the certificate. So thank you, and Berryessa Designs has been extraordinarily generous. They have, de they have 
donated four lamps for our prizes. So they're going to stand up here for a few minutes and draw four different numbers. So first one. Three eighty six. Repeat that again. Three six six three eight six. And thi this is for the Julia lamp, and this is a floor lamp. This is for the Berryessa Designs Julia floor lamp, and we are giving a certificate because. It's really important that you get the proper type of lighting. And so th with this certificate, yeah. sir, what you're going to what we're going to ask you to do is come visit Mike and Elaine in the back of the library and they'll work with you to find the proper lighting for yourself. Okay. Okay. Oh, come on, here's some people. <laughs> okay. The next lamp is also a floor lamp. It's the Berryessa Designs Elaine lamp. Okay. So. It is uh, 366362. Let's try this again. 366 362 No one? All right, let's try it. Oh. Okay. Let Let's try another number. <laughs> 366491 491 <laughs> Oh That's you, Emily? <laughs> oh, 362 Emily had the first number. She didn't realize it. <laughs> It looks like Emily had the first number and the second number nobody showed up. So Emily, you get <laughs> Mikey, what here, I'll hold your I'll okay. I'll hold your press. All right, sure. And Emily, what you're going to do is if you could visit with Mike and Elaine afterwards and they will help you pick out the proper lighting. So and we'll we'll just kind of The next one is a oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I you know you see. Okay. So okay. Like there we go. Wow. The la the fourth lamp, fourth and last lamp that was donated by Berryessa Designs is the Berryessa Designs Junior Goose Lamp. This is also a desk lamp. So, okay, pull out your tickets. Okay. It's three six six four zero two. Is Ezra Robinson in the room? 
Ezra Robinson from Staples, are you here? Okay, he's not here today, but I did want to acknowledge him. Ezra Robinson from Staples has been um, critical in helping us. They've been wonderful partners. They have donated, uh, uh, donated and supported us with all of the invitations that were mailed to you. They have been wonderful with their support. So I need a round of applause for them. Thank you. Can you pass this on to Mike, please? Okay. Can I get Joe McDaniels from Freedom Scientific, please? Hi. I would like to acknowledge Joe McDaniels and Freedom Scientific for all that they have done in supporting our eye disease seminar, our clients, our students and patrons in the San Diego community. Thank you, and, and Joe, thank you. And they have generously donated a Ruby XL HD, the la their latest Ruby, for our free drawing. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Brittany. Hey, if you're not the lucky winner, I'll be showing it in classroom two, right over here by the, the restrooms. And we also have, uh, we're also showing our new magic software, which makes everything in the PC magnified. So, Wonderful. should we do the drawing? Yes. The winner is ticket number 366333. Wow. <laughs> that was the lucky one. Sorry about that. Don't know how that happened. Thank you, Joe. Can I get Justin Moore and Catherine Elvester up here? Are you are you two in here? Thank you so much. They're from Enhanced Vision. Thank you so much. We would like to thank the two of you and Enhanced Vision for everything that you do for Braille Institute, our clients, patrons, and the San Diego community. Thank you so much, though. Here you go. And so a round of applause for Enhanced Vision. <laughs> Enhanced Vision has generously donated their latest Pebble HD. It is a 4.3... HD screen, and we will give it away right now. And we ju I, I, I just want to show you really quickly what it looks like. Yeah, I think I just want to show you really quickly what they have ended up giving up on. 2.51 a.m., Wednesday, January 11th, 2006. It really isn't 2.51 a.m. because I would be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all, but I would be in bed. <laughs> the date and time and we are located in classroom six which is directly here um, on the corner over here so come in and see us and we'd be delighted to show you the pebble HD and also the da Vinci and my name is Catherine Elvester and I am the San Diego dealer and this is Justin Moore and he is the Western Regional Territory manager so come on over and say hello to us and Justin, who do we have? Um, so the number here is 366-461. Uh, six, six, uh, six, we got a winner down here. So yeah, stop by uh, uh, room six. We're, d we're down there. We're Enhanced Vision. Uh, we're, we're located in Huntington Beach, and all our products are designed and assembled here in California. Uh, 65 Californians have jobs because of our company. And so when you support our company, yeah, you're supporting that. So go ahead and stop by room six. Thank you.